In today's video, we'll take a look at the Mars Kit Raspberry Pi 5 Starter Kit. We'll unbox, assemble it, and set up PiOS Desktop. I'm John, and welcome to Wagner's Tech Talk. I would like to thank Mars Study for sending over this kit for review. The version we'll be looking at is the 4GB Raspberry Pi 5 kit, and from the box it appears they are located in the UK. At the bottom of the box we'll find all the specs for the Pi 5 itself. Let's jump in and see what all is included. This box contains the case and additional accessories, the power supply, the Raspberry Pi 5 itself, and a small instruction booklet that was too tiny for my old eyes. Even with readers, it was difficult for me to see, but those with very good eyesight may have no problem at all. Also included are two HDMI cables. One end has a micro HDMI and the other a full-size HDMI. And again, there's two of them, just in case you want to connect two displays to your Pi 5. The included Pi 5 is the 4 gigabyte model. On the board itself, they placed a small resistor on the board to identify the amount of memory. On the side, we have the Ethernet port, two USB 3 and two USB 2.0 ports, as well as a USB-C for the power and the two micro HDMI ports. If you are looking for a more detailed discussion on the Pi 5 itself, please see the Pi 5 Getting Started Guide, which I will have linked below. The included power supply is 5.1 volts, 5 amps, and 25.5 watts, and is not the official Pi Foundation power supply. The box that contains the case has the bulk of the kit, including a 64 gigabyte micro SD card, which contains the 64 bit version of Pi OS pre-installed. That is, you won't need a separate computer to image the card. There is a small USB thumb drive that allows you to insert a micro SD for imaging a different operating system directly from the Pi. It also has both a USB-A and USB-C connector, which is a nice addition. There are four copper heat sinks included, which will apply directly to the Pi, a fan that includes four mounting screws and nuts, a decent small Phillips head screwdriver to put everything together, and last but not least, the Pi 5 case with nine layers of acrylic. We can now begin the assembly. The case itself appears pre-assembled, but it's really not. You want to remove all four screws, but on the last screw, hold the case so everything stays together. You'll also want to keep this small plastic piece in the bag nearby. We're going to need it during assembly. For each of the nine pieces of acrylic, you'll likely want to remove the protective covering on each. That is, of course, 18 pieces to remove, and some of the sections can be a pain to peel off. As you remove each, stack them back in the same orientation for easier assembly. With all the protective coverings removed, let's go ahead and apply the copper heat sinks to the Pi 5. Before I begin sticking them onto each of the chips, I first like to place them over the chips to see where they fit best. And yes, this looks pretty good. Now you can remove the adhesive protection and apply the heat sink to all four of the chips as shown here. Give each a little push to make sure they adhere well. And now, all four are applied and it looks pretty good. You can use your fingernails or a pair of tweezers to remove the small plastic cover over the fan connector near the USB ports. I prefer to set up this case from the bottom up. To do that, take the bottom two pieces and place them together and then slide in two screws from the bottom diagonally from each other. We will only use these screws temporarily as a guide during the installation and swap their orientation once fully assembled. That is, we want the nuts on the bottom of the case and not the top. Now position panel number seven, making sure the cutout for the power and the display port is on the bottom. We can now position the Pi 5 such that the micro SD slot is on the left and it fits in nicely. Make note of the small power switch on the side of the Pi. The next layer we'll add will allow pressing the button. Remove the small acrylic button from the packaging and we'll use it in this next step. This piece, number six, can only go one way. 
I prefer to use the Ethernet port as a guide from this point forward to make sure that the panel is oriented properly. It just makes things easier for me. Now take the small acrylic button piece and set it in the grooves of the acrylic. You should be able to easily press the button now and I recommend checking it out to make sure before we continue. Now add panel 5 over the guide screws. The small acrylic button should now stay in place. Before we build up the sides too high, we'll go ahead and plug in the fan. Take the white connector and you'll notice a slightly rounded edge on one end. Connect it such that the yellow wire is towards the outer edge of the case. Then make sure the connector is fully pressed down by using either your fingernails or a pair of tweezers. Then just place the fan inside the middle of the case for now. We'll now position panel number four. Remember to use the ethernet port as a guide for the orientation. And the same for panel three. Only two more panels remain. If you plan to use the GPIO pins, now is a good time to go ahead and connect the GPIO cable then position panel number two, and you would feed the GPIO cable through like this. However, before assembling the top, we first need to secure the fan. We'll take care of that next. There are two ways the fan can be oriented, either with the label pointing up or facing down. I initially installed the fan with the label pointing down, which resulted in the fan pushing air up out of the case. I also tested with the fan label facing up and blowing air down onto the heatsink. After running a stress test in both orientations, the Pi 5 ran about 4 degrees cooler with the label visible from the top of the case, so I highly recommend you assemble yours with the label visible from the top of the case. The orientation of the fan that you see here was during my initial test with the label pointing down. I want to make it clear that the fan should be installed with the label pointing up instead. However, aside from that one point, everything else you see here is correct. At this point, it's simply a matter of dropping in the screws into the empty holes and securing them with the nuts. Once you've added the two screws and nuts, you can then remove the remaining two screws and switch their orientation so the head of the screw is on the top of the case and the nut secured at the bottom. One thing that this case lacks is some rubber feet at the bottom. This would help keep the case from sliding around on the desk. Not a big deal really, but something to mention. Now we can install the 64GB microSD with PiOS 64-bit pre-installed. Before we make all the connections and power it up for the first time, here's a quick look at the case. As a reminder, if you want to image a different operating system to a separate microSD card, you can insert that microSD card here and then plug it into one of the blue USB 3.0 ports for faster write speeds. I do have this beautiful MageDoc PIX10 portable 4K touchscreen display that I will be discussing in a dedicated video very soon, so be sure and subscribe if you don't want to miss it. You'll plug in the micro HDMI cable in the port nearest the USB-C power and the other end to your TV or monitor. We'll need a keyboard and a mouse. I'll use the official Pi keyboard and mouse, but any will do. Now we'll just plug in the USB-C power cable. The LED will turn green and the Pi 5 will boot up. Now we'll transition over to the video capture so you can get a better look at the setup process. When Raspberry Pi Desktop starts up, a setup wizard will walk you through the process. Just click Next to begin. Here you can change your country, your language, and time zone. I'll also check to use the English language and to use the US keyboard and click Next. You'll then need to create an account to log in your Pi 5. Enter a username and a password that you'll remember or write it down. Then click Next. Now you can select your Wi-Fi network name from the list. Mine happens to be Lucas, so I'll select that and click Next. Now enter the password for your Wi-Fi network and click Next. 
You'll be prompted which browser you prefer to use. I'll leave the default of Chromium and click Next. Now you'll be prompted to check for any updates. I highly recommend clicking Next here and installing the latest updates. This process will take several minutes, so I'll go ahead and skip ahead. Once the update is complete, click the OK button. Now click the Restart button to restart the Pi 5. The Pi 5 has now been rebooted with all the latest updates applied. We'll go ahead and launch the Chromium browser and visit wagnerstechtalk.com forward slash rpi5. On this page, you'll find a lot of useful information on the Raspberry Pi 5, including a more detailed getting started guide, how to set up Ubuntu on your Pi 5, and if you want to use your Pi for retro gaming, definitely check out the Bodicera Pi 5 video or the recall box guide. All of this information is free and available to help you get the most out of your Pi 5 and more is forthcoming. Before we wrap up this video, it's important that we verify how well the heat sinks and fan are functioning. To do this, from the guide, I'll select Stress Test from the table of contents. Then, copy and paste the command to install Stress into a terminal session. And then, copy and paste the command to run Stress for 15 minutes. This test will keep the CPU running at 100%, demonstrating a worst case scenario. The fan ran very quiet throughout this test. It was inaudible, in my opinion. When it comes to the maximum temperature reported, it was 77.4 degrees Celsius, which is below the 80 degrees until thermal throttling occurs. Thermal throttling is when the CPU performance is reduced to avoid overheating. Also, I'd like to point out that it was running nearly 2 degrees hotter than the Pi 5 active cooler. Overall, I think the Mars Kit Raspberry Pi 5 starter kit with a 64GB microSD card is a nice kit. I hope that Mars Study will consider adding 4 rubber feet to the kit, and some may find adding the active cooler to the case may keep the Pi 5 a bit cooler. However, the case design is very unique, albeit a little time-consuming to assemble. The kit is currently available on Amazon. I'll place a link in the description below if you're interested. It's around $140 US dollars. What do you think of the Mars kit? Let me know in the comments below. I hope you found this video helpful, and if you did, please click the like button. It does help the YouTube algorithm show this video to more people who are looking for a Pi 5 kit. If you haven't already subscribed, it's always free, and I hope you'll consider doing so. And with that, I look forward to talking with you again very soon.